Hey everyone, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. Um, so the last time I recorded this was October. It's currently April, and I was like, oh shit, that's coming out now. So I was like, oh god, I've got to record it. So here I am. Walking, doing a lot of it recently. Back on Earth, you never got this much exercise. You're going to be so in shape when this is over. Provided you still have all your limbs attached and bones uncrushed. You could probably come up with a safer way to travel, taxi or some sort of bus, but you don't have enough money and you can't read the road signs. Also, you're routinely covered in blood and bruises. So, walking it is. Tired as you are, you s your feet still carry you towards friendship. It's question mark or zebra. Kodak. This guy is mononymic. Because you can see that this is just, you know. You can tell that these are the same letter and his name ends in the same letter. So that's probably Kodak and Zebra. But this guy, just, let's go with Mysterious Man. As usual, the streets are hopping, just bouncing around like an overactive bunny rabbit on Easter morning. Up ahead is an intersection of streets. Uh, up ahead at an intersection of streets is some kind of night market. Well, every market on Alterney is a night market. As stated, you're broke, but there's nothing wrong with a little window shopping. Who knows what awesome stuff you'll find? You can learn a lot about a culture from their stores. You are so intent on thinking positive thoughts that you realize you were nearly at the market. Uh, that you were nearly at the market before you realized quite a few people are coming toward you, in the opposite direction. Some of them are running, actually, and screaming. Looks like something has gone down, violence-wise. It's not a stampede. You aren't in any danger of trampling, and the street is wide enough to just step aside, let the crowd pass by, or it would be. You get a brief, furtive glimpse of a pair of focused yellow eyes under, under a low-pulled hood. Then a hand grabs yours so tightly the tips of your fingers go numb. With a rough yank, you're pulled into the flow of the crowd. The troll girl who has a hold of you speaks quickly and quietly. You have to lean your head in close to hear. We are on a date. You're my mate, Sprint, or my Moirail. Um, okay, so we're at least, like, platonic, I think. That's what that means, right? Yeah, that's what Moirail means. Whatever you want, we're just a normal couple out on a night on the town. We're gonna go catch a movie and get some soft serve grub cream, you feel me? Wow, okay. Your heart beats so fast, you can feel it in the back of your throat. You adjust your grip a little to make the hand easier to hold. In response, you get a squeeze like she's thanking you. Sorry there. You match her pace, a surprising difficult feat considering how short she is. Behind you, people are shouting, what the heck happened back there? Someone died. You figured that. That's not exactly rare for Alternia, is it? You've seen way more dead people in the last couple of days than you've seen throughout your entire life on your planet. You tell the troll girl you thought that was kind of just normal here. Normal, sure. When low bloods get killed. Natural order of things, right? But with high bloods, it's different. Personally, I don't give a shit about the natural order. No matter what the job is, I'll take it. Oh, 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 mm hmm uh, so Highblood is dead, and you are currently holding hands with the troll who did the dirty deed. She chose you to help her lay low, i.e. made you her accomplice, i.e. you are now her friend. Helping someone carry out a cold-blooded murder is a super friendly thing to do. What did she call you? Her mate sprint? You aren't sure what it is, but it sounds great. You ask her what you should call her. My name's Polypa. <laughs> Polypa. But there's no reason to go throwing it around. In fact, let's not talk at all. You want to point out it's not a very convincing date if you are just walking in silence, but that would require talking, and she told you not to do that. Trio of those spiky robots go marching by, drones or whatever. Their big, ugly heads swivel back and forth like they're looking for someone. Palapa doesn't say anything, and she keeps her eyes forward, but she goes as sharp as a laser, every muscle in her body tensing. You feel it through her hand. Her fingers tighten on yours until the drones disappear to the crowd. She thinks you around a corner into a smaller alley connecting two roads. There's nothing here but a pothole and a couple dumpsters. Her hoodie has a symbol on the front of it, two overlapping gold ovals. Most trolls seem to have a symbol designated their blood color on it somewhere. That means she's a gold blood, right? Oh. But then Polypa yanks the sweatshirt over her head. Underneath it, she's wearing a tank top emblazoned with a symbol in olive green. It looks like a, a cat. She's pretty cute. Interesting. Okay. Um, I guess that's why the, the pun earlier was let the cat out of the bag. It said let the meow beast out of the bag, but... Um, I think they're just called green bloods like this are usually, yeah, all of bloods like this are usually related to cats. 
because of Nepeta and Mulin, I think her name is. Tosses the sweatshirt into the nearest dumpster and kicks a button on the side. A whoosh. Accompanied by the sulfury stink of immolation. Note to self, do not go dumpster diving in Alternia. Polypa grabs her hand again as you head back out on the street. With her other hand, she works the tie out of her hair, shaking out of its ponytail, letting it fall, fall in thick, sweaty clumps against her neck. Next, she reaches off and takes off the right, takes part of her right horn off. Wait, no, is a little bit of an ear. An artificial bit to cover up a notch in the chitin. What are all those random wardrobe changes about? You wonder what you wonder until you actually begin to listen to some of the conversations happening around you. And check out some of the billboard sized screen mounted on roofs every few blocks. Seems like a rumor mill is going pretty hard. Apparently, a well respected Violet Blood is dead, killed in public, in full view of witnesses by a gold blood girl with a ponytail. Wow. You're really dealing with a professional here. I need to find somewhere to lay low until the heat turns down. I mean, we both do, since you're my associate now. I had a contact waiting, but I don't know what happened to her. It's possible she got spooked. Any ideas for likely hideouts? I'm not from around here. You wonder what in the world made her think you have any idea what's going on ever. She keeps giving you sharp looks as if she's gradually catching on to who it is she's chosen to recruit. You want her to understand that no matter how busted you look, you are an amazing friend and co-conspirator. Well, here's your chance. What do you propose? That's a possibility. Most of the hive stems around here are cheap rentals, burgundy or bronze at the most. I could take them, no problem. I mean, I can take anyone. Some jobs. Wow, she's buff. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to fix my cam. There we go. I can take anyone. Some jobs require a little more forethought. You kind of meant finding an empty unit, or maybe skulking in the foyer or alien Starbucks, uh, but you don't want to tell your cool new friend how to do her job. There you go again, jump the gun and claiming friends you don't have the right to, but she did choose you. Though by this point, she may be wishing she'd grab some other random stranger's hand. I'll pick one. This was your idea. Oh, jeez. You don't need this kind of responsibility in your life. Nothing good will let her come... Uh, will come from letting you be in charge, but you also don't want her to think you are useless. You just don't want... You just kind of wish she'd tell you what to do and leave it at that. You pick a tall purple building at random. How about that one? Sure, I guess. You enter what seems to be a standard shabby apartment building, climbing the lobby steps up to a hallway lined with doors. This could be any apartment on Earth, but instead of letters there's the, on the nameplates, there's those little colorful symbols. They remind you a little of zodiac signs. Huh, weird. That's because they are. Anyway, all the ones are red or brown, like Paula predicted. She listens at a couple doors before settling on one with a red symbol. You wait for her to pull a lockpick or high-tech paraphernalia, or even just a pin from her hair. Instead, she uh, takes a step back and delivers sh two sharp kicks just above the knob. What? I'm not the goddamn super. You assure, you, you assure her you are absolutely not judging the way she's running this operation. You don't think you've ever met a mercenary before. Unless you count the guy who tried to hit you up for cash when you were injured, or the little girl who'd train your blood for paints, or the boy constantly on the prowl for delicious mates. Nice. The apartment is dingy, small, and smells like old pizza. Good news. Not that it smells bad, just the fact that there's pizza here. You didn't think you could live on a planet that didn't have pizza. That's beyond the pale. You try to shut the busted door as well you can. Polypa plunks herself down on the couch and pulls out her phone, or what did Scylla called it? A palm husk? She pulls out her palm husk and proceeds to ignore you. That's okay. It's important for friends to give each other space. You take the opportunity to poke around the uh, apartment you're currently illegally occupying, just generally being a nosy piece of shit. Whoever lives here is a slob. Dishes are piled high in the sink, and the windows are so dirty you can barely see out of them. You can see the smudges. Something sticky and red stains half the counter. It might be blood, but it might also be Kool-Aid. Oh, oh, oh. Um, so, in the real world, the Juggalos, people who are fans of Insane Clown Posse and that subculture, um, <laughs> drink Fago. And, uh, okay, this is one of those things where it's like, okay, no, for real, though. But multiple Homestuck villains are actually Juggalos. There's a there's like four or five different. There's like six or seven different Juggalo characters in Homestuck. <laughs> no joke. And on um, on Alternia, they're seen as a messianic figure, 
And so there's a bunch of people, typically in the higher blood casts, who worship them. Which means that this is probably Fago, a shitty soda typically drunk by Juggalos. Fuck, goddammit, shitting fuck breath. Something appears to have gone wrong. Palapa is still on the couch, hunched over her palm husk held close to her face. Uh, she taps with her knuckles. You've noticed a lot of trolls do that, probably because of their claws. It's all over Shitter. Everyone's talking about it. My contact. They got her. She's been cold. Her voice is flat, her eyes expressionless. She lets the palm husk slip from her fingers into her lap. You stand next to the couch like an asshole. You don't really know what to say, and you doubt Paul up as the hug type. Can't really stand her looking so dejected. Before you start pitying me, don't. I barely knew her. It's not like we were in quadrant or anything. It was business. You sit down on the other end of the couch, tipping your head and raising your eyebrows to show you are very ready to listen and learn and commiserate. Paul up wraps her arms around her knees. Most pros work with a partner. It's easier when you have someone to trust to watch your back. It's usually quadranted pairs who work together. There's one particularly famous olive and gold blood duo. I've lost plenty of jobs to them, but I've never found anyone I trust to make into my partner beyond a random one-off. Killing a sea dweller is no joke. It's almost totally impossible. Does that mean that the guy back in the town skirt isn't actually dead? Polypa looks affronted at the thought. Excuse me, no. It means I had to get a very expensive knife and coat it in very expensive poison and stab in exactly the right place. The motherfucker is dead. There's no doubt about that. I don't leave jobs I've done. High cast jobs are my specialty. Most people are too afraid to take jobs higher than teal. Me, I don't care. Low blood, high blood. If you've got the cash, I'll do the job. Also, these horns remind me of Gamzy um, and Curlos and uh, all the headphones. You know, gotta be listening to something. Also, this is the thing that's just in Homestuck in general. One moment. Um, but f no one talks about how high bloods. So the highest of high bloods are sea dwellers. Um, indigo bloods, I think, like you know the people who worship juggalos, are not sea dwellers but live near it, and then the two top tiers live in the ocean. They are fully amphibious. And no one talks about that. Um, Aridin and Feferi should have a way higher body density to survive the bottom of the ocean as easily as they do. But they're just as squishy as any other troll. People weren't sure why Gamzu was so strong, but it would make sense that, like, if he's, you know... How do I put this? If he's, you know, a sea dweller and he has a high body density, then he would be stronger. But, you know, I'm just bitching. Uh, back in. If I did have a partner, it would make things easier. I admit that much. He coughed lightly into a closed fist. <clears throat> What's this? Something caught in your throat, perhaps? Could it be the steady hand of fate reaching a finger down and testing your gag reflex? <laughs> a murmur delicately that sometimes destiny steers you in a direction you never thought you'd go. Maybe, just maybe, it has steered her to you. That's forward, for sure, but you're pretty much an old hand at this by now, right? Papa snorts. It's a little watery. She isn't she isn't crying, is she? No way. Not a tough assassin like her, you're imagining it. You? No offense, but I grabbed you because you look so weird, and I figured you wanted to avoid the drones even more so than I do. You don't exactly blend in. Can't argue with her logic, but a sourness starts on the back of your throat that at the realization that Paulipa had not chosen you for your obvious trustworthiness and friendship potential, but rather because you look like a goddamn disaster. Fair, fair assessment, whatever. You can get past that. God knows you've gotten past worse, like attempted murder. As a, few, as a good friend recently said, you gotta break a few cluck beast embryos to make a grublet. She's considering you now, more thoughtful than before. Well, I guess beggars can't exactly be choosers. But you have to remember. But you have to, what you have to remember, you aren't destined to find out. That fate finger reaches down further and chokes you. Keys jingle outside of the apartment before whoever is out there catches sight of the busted door. What the hell? You and Polypa lock eyes. Oh, shit. Quick flash of silver, and suddenly a knife appears in Polypa's hand. Where did he even come from? Outside in the hall, someone is swearing. The broken door falls inward, and before it is all the way open, Polypa is up and over the couch, launching herself in the intruders. Shit, wait. You were the intruders. And this is what you were afraid of. You're about to watch your new friend kill some poor low-blood troll. This is a terrible idea. Too bad there's no way to go back in time and make all your choices over again. 
Yeah, that'd be rad. You wish life was like that. A short little guy, a short stout little guy with a red symbol on his shirt comes through, but right behind him is a troll so tall he has to duck down to get through the door. Oh, hell no. The giant troll catches Polypo with one hand. He's got big ram-like horns and a curly purple symbol on his shirt. His face is painted in lines of black and white, makeup designed to make his face look like a skull. Uh, look, babe, look at these tiny regular thieves. Polypo writhes in his grip, clawing at him like an angry cat. Yeah, there you go. All of blood's a cat. He hangs on, giving her a shake. Shit, you gotta do something. But what? If you get in that purple guy's reach, you're absolutely gonna get killed. Try to move your feet, but your survival instincts aren't are kicking in. You are rooted to the spot. Can't do anything? You're useless. You don't even know what happened to Polypo's knife. God, you wish you'd taken some self-defense classes back on Earth. The high blood gives Polypo a wide smile and tosses her across the room like he's lobbing a dodgeball. She lands on her back, rolls to her feet, and bolts for the window. Of course you would have a high blood mate spread. The high blood turns to you and sticks out a big gray tongue, and wow, you can suddenly move your feet again. You throw yourself out the window after Polypa. You're only one floor up, but there's more fl that's one floor more than you would like to be when falling out of a building. Your fall is broken by Polypa, meaning you get a collection of bony elbows and knees applied to your gut. She bares her teeth at you. Get off, idiot. They're definitely going to call the drones. We've got to run. You roll your big floppy body off of her and hustle to keep up as she peels off down the street. You throw one last glance over your shoulder to see the two guys hanging out the window. The high blood waves lazily. Polypa starts pretty strong, but pretty soon she is uh, limping and leaning on your shoulder. A jagged piece of glass is wedged in her calf muscle. You lean down to get a closer look. You're no doctor, but recently you've become an expert in acute injuries. What the hell? Stop. You want me to leave a blood trail? We need to split up now we've been seen together. Your heart sinks all the way to your aching feet. God, you'd so you'd been so sure you had this one on lock. You mentioned half mumbling to yourself that maybe you'd be better if you stayed together. Safety numbers and all that. Oh yeah? Maybe safety for you. This was a terrible idea. I can't believe I ever trusted that someone could have my back. Yeah, let's do another one of your amazing plans. Sounds great. <gasps> no. She leaves you at an intersection of streets. Even though she is no longer leaning of you, you nevertheless feel a heaviness settle inside you, philosophically. A deep fatigue so intense you want to curl up on the ground, so you do. No, at least your ass didn't kill her. Damn. Uh, oh, cool. So now we have our real uh, sprites as well. And Zebra Kodak. Your stroll takes you into a nice part of town that seems to have larger, more McMansion-style hives. <laughs> Based on your past experience on Alternia, you're not quite certain upper-class enclaves in equal safety for you, but you might find you might as well explore. You never know where you'll find your next friend. The power of positive thinking must be on your side because someone emerges from the shadows of these sprawling suburbs. Fuck, what's this guy's voice? Oh, hello there. I don't believe we've met... I'm sure I would have remembered someone with such unique looks. You don't know where you are, do you? Oh, his uh, his quirk is that he keeps adding the um, the different types of love. By this point on your time in Alternia, you don't know if it's wise wise admit that you're lost and naive to the ways of the world, but you don't know what you could say to try to convince this guy you've got any kind of street smarts. You nod your head reluctantly, but he actually looks more interested in you after your confirmation that you're new to the neighborhood. Have you found someone who likes you for your vulnerability and naivete? That would be some fantastic luck. It's a good thing that I found you. Not everyone is respectful as low bloods as I am. Oh, but I shouldn't make assumptions just because you're not much to look at, my bad. I don't mean to be forward, but you're just so interesting. Mind if I ask what color your blood is? You hesitate. Why well, you're still terrifyingly ignorant of the intricacies of Alternian society. You're starting to feel terrifyingly informed about the role that blood color plays in this world. And you've managed to gather by now that plain old human blood isn't considered one of the better colors to have. What do you do? Red, huh? That's so unique. I've always liked the color red. I don't think I've ever filled a quadrant with a red... Oh no, he's a slut! Oh no, I'm in danger! <laughs> Why was that my first thought? I mean, uh, I don't think I've ever made friends with a red blood before. Which is technically a quadrant. You don't know what a quad... I do. You don't know what a quadrant is, but what it means to fill one. Given your experience on this planet so far, you're nervous that it could mean something violent. But you don't want to further expose your ignorance, so you say you just say you're excited as... 
You're as excited for this friendship as he is. You come on strong. Nice. You need a place to stay for the day, right? I can help you out with that. I've got plenty of spare rooms for guests in my hive. You know, because I believe it's important to help out the underserved members of the community when you can. Is that underserved or undeserved? There's an R there. My hive is this way, shall we? You follow him down the street. You guess it must qualify as a nice night because you see lots of other trolls walking around here too. Most of them are dressed as nice as zebra and you see a few shabby looking trolls that must be low bloods walking with high bloods. Today is actually flushed affirmation day, so you'll see a lot of trolls taking their mate spritz out to celebrate. Lucky for you, my flushed quadrant is currently empty. So I'm all yours tonight. That's pink, that's the diamond one. Um, it's essentially like soulmates, but for friendship. That sounds a little weird. He doesn't need to be all yours, you assure him. You're an easygoing individual who's happy to share their friends with plenty of other friends. Sure, sure. Sharing can be a good time, if you're into that. I could be speaking personally, like maybe with two low bloods, but not in an objectifying way. Everyone involved has to respect each other, you know. So, I don't want to like point figures and be like polyamorous, because like polyamory is kind of just a thing on this planet, because every there's four types of romance, and people are kind of expected to have all four, and one of them includes three. It's a trio, so. This is something I'm not 100% sure on myself, but as far as I know, if you're like an optimal troll, in the same way that you're like an optimal human, you're married and you have three kids, you know, the three genders, boy, girl, and baby. Um, if you're a troll, you have red love, red rom, which is the heart, so you have one partner. You have pink rom, which is the diamond, that's another partner. You have black rom, which is the spade, which is a third partner. And then gray, uh, which is the clubs, which means you have another two partners because that one's a trio. So optimally, everyone has four or five um, partners. So I guess being a slut has like different connotations, but this guy seems to like move from, from person to person almost predatorily. I mean, not like creepy, but like, you know, nothing but mammals predatorially. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Wow. What? You have no idea how your innocent comment about friendship got taken to this particular place. You decide maybe the best thing to say here is nothing. Because who knows how he might misinterpret you next. Uh-oh. Oh, looks like a couple of low-blood, high-blood couples out today for the holiday. Pretty unusual to see in this neighborhood, to be honest. It's sad, but most of these low-bloods are probably with their mates bitch because it's socially advantageous. Pretty shitty of the high-bloods to take advantage of that, but not everyone is as socially conscious as I- Oh, God. He's average Twitter user. I think it's super terrible when... When the high bloods don't treat their low blood mate spritz like the queens they are. You look around at the other couples. Uh, the class divide is pretty noticeable, and some of the high blood trolls have scornful looks on their faces when talking to low blood dates. One troll dressed in cerulean is making her shabbily dressed mate spritz kneel down so he can give her a ride on his shoulders. Could be a cute couple -y thing, you guess, except she's sure laughing a lot and has the heel of her boot pressing into the back of his neck. You don't know them. You don't want to speculate about what people might be into, but it does seem kind of humiliating. You know what, actually, that's fair. Zebra sees her you're looking and shudders theatrically. In the process of waving his arms around in disgust, he slips an arm over your shoulders. I'm so sorry. You shouldn't have to see something like that. Trying to think of a tactful and friendly way to move his arm, uh, or move away from his arm around your shoulders when you arrive at what's, what must be his hive. It's the biggest and most McMansion-y hive on the block, and when he stops in front of it, he lets go of you to gesture proudly at his sprawling home. Um, I should mention, he actually has the second highest land dweller blood color, or in the fourth highest overall. Um, if you divide the, the 12 blood colors in half, he's, you know, in the middle of the top half, but if you divide them into three, low blood, mid blood, and high blood, he's actually um, the lowest you can be with, while still being a high blood, because you know they're in they're in. Uh, there's twelve total. Welcome to my humble abode. I feel grateful, you know, to be able to share my wealth with those less fortunate. Uh huh. 
When you walk inside the front door, you're greeted by a very distinguished looking white zebra. It has normal zebra markings all over its body, except for around its neck, where the dark gray zags to form something that looks like a bow tie, almost like it's wearing a suit. Nice. This is an interesting thing, because normally, um, the nature of a Lucis, uh, is that Luci are just earth animals that are completely monochrome, just white. Um, but this is one where, like, the only real difference between a zebra, at least in this art style, and a horse is the stripes, so they have to make the stripes gray, because it's still, it can't be, you know, black. You don't know how its zebra face has managed to radiate pure disdain when it looks at you, but that is unquestionably the energy you're getting. I don't mind my Lucis. He's kind of socially old-fashioned. But he lets me keep low bloods around the hive to help out and stuff, so he's not all bad. Let me give you the grand tour. As Zebra takes you through the spacious hive, you can see other trolls in several of the rooms. Most of them aren't wearing clothes as nice as Zebra's. You're guessing these are the low bloods he mentioned? They seem to all be doing chores, sweeping, cooking, exchanging green slime in troll-sized bathtubs for other, possibly fresher green slime. Each of them glances up at you and Zebra when you pass by and then looks deferentially away. The Zebra Lucis is following you, and every time you exit a room, it pauses in the doorway to whinny out what could be orders, or possibly he's just berating them. You arrive at an empty ballroom-looking space upstairs where several low-blood low trolls are hard at work cleaning up the remains of what must have been quite a party. Zebra seems to notice how all of the trolls in here are scrubbing the floor and how they're all avoiding your eyes. See? I told you I'd taken plenty of guests. I believe it's important to promote diversity, you know? That's why I don't see other indigo bloods here. You can't enslave them. That's not kosher. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. This character, he's all over the place. Uh, looks like all the guests are busy today. Well, an important part of communal living involves contributing labor when necessary, right, guys? A few low bloods mutter an affirmation, while others just put their sponges and mops down to prostrate their whole bodies on the floor. Zebra looks a little uncomfortable with the bowing, but not that uncomfortable. He doesn't introduce you to any of them. Ah, uh, they don't yet realize that my hive is a sanctuary from all the harsh injustices of the outside world. Anyway, enough about my low-blood guests. Let's take care of you, shall we? Perhaps as Lucis has had enough of tolerating your presence, because it takes the opportunity to stop following you and go huff at more of Zebra's guests. Now, for better or worse, you are alone, and Zebra has turned all of his attention on you. His smile seems very friendly. You want to see it as friendly. The night is still young. I'm happy to do whatever you want to do. Can I leave? If you feel like going out on the town to celebrate Flushed Affirmation Day, I have lots of other friends I could introduce you to. Help you meet the right kind of culture, you know? What? Oh, if you're tired, I can show you to a guest room now and we can have a nice night in. Hmm, go out or stay in. You feel that going out with Zebra on Flushed Affirmation Day might potentially give him the wrong idea, and besides, you're pretty tired, so you don't feel like going out. Tell him you're ready to retire to your guest room. Oh, sure. By the way, have you ever heard of Chixie Roxmer? You probably haven't. You don't seem like a very serious music fan. Uh, but you've got a great opportunity to l tonight to learn from me. One of her low-blood musician friends is playing a show for the holiday, and I can get us in because I'm super connected with the scene. We should go just in case she's there. You could have sworn you told him you wanted to stay in tonight, but okay. You can gather the remains of your energy and go to the concert with him. That's what a good friend would do. Takes you across town to the concert, only trying to hold your hand or put his arm around you a couple of times on the way, so it could be worse. Maybe hand holding is totally platonic on Alternia? You hope so. The concert itself is one troll with a guitar and harmonica, who, according to Zebra, is a low blood whose songs are spreading truly radical messages, almost as radical as Chixie's. You don't understand the tunes as much as you can, but you. You enjoy the tunes as much as you can, but you don't understand what the lyrics are trying to say. You ask Zebra what the lyrics mean, since the message is apparently important to him, but he gets annoyed with your question. Oh, uh, what? The lyrics are about, well, about lots of things. Uh, social justice and oppression and stuff. It's kind of hard to explain to someone who doesn't already get it. Like, you're, if you're not on my level already, I don't know what I can really say, you know? Ugh, man. He's, he's like that guy on Twitter who's like, Ugh, sorry I'm a man, but you know, I'm one of the good ones. Anyway, you got fat tits. Has anyone ever told you that? Also, Queen. Enough about the music. I want to talk about you. What sort of things are you into? What if this guy's name is Troll for, um, 
or uh, Alternian rather, for virtue signaling. You haven't had many opportunities, Alternian, to talk about your interest. How exciting. You say you like playing games, but he's already interrupting you. Uh, cool, cool. Sounds great. Really interesting. What's your quadrant situation like? It's harder to pretend you know what he's talking about now that he's asked you about quadrants directly. You admit you have no idea what he means by quadrants situation. Wow. You're even more clueless than I thought. Don't worry, I still find you attractive. He goes to a brief, but not really brief enough, explanation of the four types of romance on Alternia. Mates Ritship, the Flush Quadrant, which sounds the most analogous to human romantic partnerships. The Pale Quadrant, Moir Allegiance, which sounds like an exceptionally codependent friendship by human standards. Auspicism, the Ashen Quadrant, which you don't understand at all. Basically, there are two people who will destroy each other if uh, the third person doesn't interfere. And Kismesitude, the Black Quadrant, which just sounds like repeatedly hooking up with someone you hate. Yeah, Kismesitude is like, instead of friends to lovers... It is rivals to lovers, no friends in between, and they still hate each other and are in love. Um, and then auspicious is like the same, but they would kill each other. But there's someone there to mediate and make sure that they stay on the same level. You're fuzzy on the details of all four of these, but you understand enough to get he's asking you if you're single. You tell him that uh, you really just want to be friends. Of course, I super respect your choices. If you ever change your mind, I'm right here. And being in a quadrant with an influential yet sensitive and socially aware indigo blood like myself could make it a lot easier for you to survive and thrive in Alternia. Wasn't he criticizing that kind of high blood, low blood, socially advantageous relationship a few hours ago? It wouldn't be very friendly of you to point out his hypocrisy, so you don't mention it. After another song, another troll at the club sidles up to Zebra and whispers something in his ear and skulks off. Zebra looks alarmed, glancing around him and edging towards the club exit. I just got a tip there's about to be a culling at this concert. We should get out of here. You definitely agree about wanting to get out of here. You enjoy... You look around at the rest of the audience still enjoying the show. You and Zebra are the only ones getting ready to leave. Is he going to warn any of the other trolls about the danger? Oh, no, definitely not. If I were to warn any of these lowbloods a culling is coming, that could mean risking my life, too. Not that I've ever tried, but everyone knows that. The highbloods here will probably be fine. We've got each other's backs. It's important to look after your comrades in the struggles. Fucking class traitor. Sure enough, you can see other trolls here who, much like Zebra, stand out because they're wearing nice clothes and are casually but urgently leaving the concert venue. The low bloods are singing and clapping with a singer on stage. No one has given them a tip off. Come on, we've got to scram. Aw, oh, man. The two of you abscond, getting away from the music club as fast as your legs will carry you. By the time Zebra decides it's safe to slow down, you're tired and out of breath. Looking around, you've arrived back in the high blood part of town. You wonder if drones descended all those clubs on those trolls of the club by now. You just can't hear it because the neighborhood is far away, closed off, and sheltered from violence. Phew, that was a close one. Going to low-blood cultural events like that can be dangerous, but it's one of the risks you have to take if you want to be an activist. I can't tell you how many times I've risked a killing to fight for low-blood rights. Civil disobedience is the only way to fight the authoritarian state. No, an authoritarian state has to be fought with violence. That's the thing, man. He turns to you and takes one of your hands and both of his, looking deep into your eyes. I think it's cool how you supported me back there when we risked our lives for the cause. That's probably the best way you can contribute to an activist and ally, you know, by supporting me. Speaking of activism, we were talking about quadrants later. Let's get back to that. He is Twitter. This guy does not want to take no for an answer. Once again, you reiterate that friendship is what you're looking for here. He nods enthusiastically and squeezes your hand tighter. Fuck yeah, I love friendship. I've always believed that a strong friendship is the best foundation for any substantial, successful romantic relationship. And many trolls start by being friends and entering into a quadrant later. You can even try to be friends and then fight too, but then fight too much. Even that can prepare you for a collision quadrant. Either way, the thought of being your friend makes my blood push a beat a little faster. Sure, you say, if what we're doing is extolling the benefits of friendship, then boy do I have some things to add to your list. For instance, friendship can give you a sense of platonic companionship with your fellow man. And friends can also come in handy when you feel the need, uh, when you need someone to help you move or take you to the airport or other non-romantic activities. You think friendship is a great thing to pursue for its own merits. Friendship is so great that once you have it, why would you want anything more? Hell yeah, you're totally so right that friendship is a great first step. Did you want to join the concert tonight? Did it persuade you to be an ally for low blood rights? You think that, going by your blood color and how often you've been almost killed by the more powerful on the planet, you're more like a member of the oppressed underclass than you are an ally. But you decide not to split hairs and tell him that, yeah, you'll be an ally to yourself. That's fantastic. I'm happy to hear that. If you're an ally to low bloods, I'll allow you to meet my mate's mate. Friend, you correct it. You can be his friend. Yeah, right, sure. I meant to say friend. 
He lets go of your hand finally, which at least counts as a partial victory and winks. Ah. Uh. Da -na 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 -na. He's the skis. All right. Um. Cool. So yeah, uh, I haven't uh, I haven't recorded this since six months ago. Yeah, six months ago. Um, so I'm a little, you know, behind on it, but I'm getting back in. Uh, we're going to beat the whole thing. We're going to at least do <clears throat> one run of everyone. We're on volume five now. Goes up to 18 and the epilogue. Oh, man. This guy is my least favorite so far. But yeah, um, I have an Alfred. This has been Hive Swap Frensim. Um, that's the full name, right? Yeah, Hive Swap Frensim because it's in canon with Hive Swap and it's the friendship simulator. But yeah, uh, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. Uh, goodbye. Have a good day.